Go ahead, Bob. Okay. Um, Sam, I think there's been, I don't know, eight, nine, ten head coaches fired in season, which is pretty high. I think Ed Orgeron might be the only one that's coaching through the season. Just kind of what, what you think about that. And based on the film you've looked at it since they announced Ed wasn't coming back, what, what have you seen from, from LSU? Yeah, you know, I think, and I'm not saying that it's right or anything of that nature, but coaches getting fired early, you know, it's hard. It makes it hard on the kids, the fan base, obviously the coaches. But I think it's happening a little bit faster now uh, because of early signing date. You know, I think everybody – uh, I think I heard somebody, and I don't know if this is true, but maybe um, Texas Tech hired a coach, you know, and I think it's very difficult on that coach. I'm sure he's very happy, but he's also employed, you know, at, at uh, I believe it was Baylor where he's coming from. So, I, you know, I think all these decisions we make, they, they have to have the kids in mind first, you know, whatever best for them. Um Number two thing is um, LSU, I believe, uh, played as physical and as hard as they have all year last week. Um, so Coach Ogeron certainly has the team still, and uh, they're very, very talented. They're LSU, you know, and but uh, from what I saw on film, uh, compared to Compared to the other weeks, um, they've always played hard, but I thought they played extremely well physical Saturday against uh, Bama. Coach, when's the last time you've been to uh, Tiger Stadium, and when's the last time you've been there at night? And what, what's your thoughts on the that? last time I was there at night uh, was when we played uh, when I was here. I think that was the 16 season, if I'm correct. Um, and – uh, no, 13, 14, 15, 15 season. Sorry. And then, uh, we went back over there in, I think it was 17, 17 when I was at Georgia, it might've been 18, but we went over there. It was a day game over there and they, they beat us when I was, you know, when we were at Georgia, but, um, that's the last time I remember a night game. Would have been that my last year here, which would have been 15. Can you just your thoughts on the, the environment? They say it's one of the craziest in all of college football. Yeah, the... I mean, it's what college football is supposed to be. You know, a lot of people, and you know, they get like I said before, they have plenty of time to get lathered up, and and uh, we're expecting a really good crowd. They support their team, and you know, they they'll be there. They'll support those kids, and. And uh, we're looking forward to it. It's going to be a big emphasis on crowd noise this week for us, obviously. What's your thoughts on where you guys are from a penalty standpoint? Obviously, there was a lot last game and um, last time – or not the last time, but when you guys went on the road against Georgia, it obviously played an impact very early on in that one. You know, you're going to get penalties. It's the ones that you really can control. And I, I you know, this – I'm sure I'll get people disagree with me here, but, you know, holding – you're probably going to get a couple of game on both sides. It happens, you know, pass interference is such a, you know, the one down in the end zone the other, other night that we, that we got right before the half, it was a bang, bang. If you slow it down and look at it, we, we were there a little early, you know, but um, those things you're going to get, it's, it's the stuff like we pick a pass and we hit somebody behind on, you know, behind the play, which is, basically automatic personal foul, no matter what, no matter how hard you hit him, no matter where you hit him, it's behind the ball. It's a, we call it the defenseless player. And then the all start, the false starts on offense and defense. Those are the ones that are coaching. And um, we have to get that um, fixed. Um, we had several in the first half. You know, one of them was strictly – and it's happened to me when I was the old line coach, you know, Ricky's making a call, you know, he's making a, what we call a down call. Um, we know nose is going to cross face. We've got a little gap scheme going. He's making a down call at the same time that KJ's calling for the ball. Those, we don't want them to happen. Those, I can see those happening. The one where we just forget the snap count or we're early, 
they have to stop and the ones where we look at the football and we work on it all the time. And Cody's kept them after practice and, and we're going to do it again this week. And we've started clapping when we're doing our ball drills and individual and different things. But until we get disciplined enough, uh, we're going to emphasize it again big time because if we're going to get beat, let's somebody beat us. But to give them things, that's what was so frustrating about the first half. And then them scoring at the very end, you know, we had to fight at halftime the feeling of we're behind, you know. Uh, and because I was frustrated. And uh, but uh, to answer your question, those those we work on them, but they have to get fixed or we've got to get players in there that can fix it. Sam, your this 20th game at Arkansas last you came in, the LSU won the national championship the year before you got here. You're going down there and you're in your 20th game here and you're favored over them. But did you ever think in the wildest expectation that the program would get to where it is this fast? I think it's a little bit of combination of the both both teams, obviously. Um, but um, I don't know. You know, I've, I've got a strong belief in the University of Arkansas. Um, we came here to try to win football games, you know, the best we know how. Um, but, no, going to LSU at night, and being favored in year two, probably, probably, honestly, probably no. Coach, where did the bowling ball come from, and why is it named Larry? I love that question. <laughs> um, so I sent uh, Pat Doherty out to find a bowling ball. Um, and he went to somewhere, and he said, man, they're expensive. And so I said, well, go down the bowling alley. They may have one or two laying around you know and so he bought Larry for $20 I did actually and it, it was great because when he brought the bowling ball, ball back it had the name Larry on it and I thought it was awesome you know and so obviously I told Hunter before the game that if we win you know we're gonna break we're gonna bring Larry out you know and and uh so that's where we got it. And Larry was purchased for twenty dollars. You know, and and the thing about that is, um, you know, I said it was like a Super Bowl for me personally and and our team. I don't know what a Super Bowl feeling is. I don't. I know what winning the Rose Bowl is like, and I know what playing a national championship game and those things are like. You know, my opinion is about our football team. And if you were in our locker room, it can't get a whole lot better than what it did. Now, that's not the goal, but that was one of the goals. And when we reach a goal, we're going to celebrate it. Coach, I don't know if you saw this, but on the, the broadcast after the game, they caught Cam Little running over to the Mississippi State kicker after he missed the kick and sharing some words with him. What did you think about that? What's it say about him that, that he would do that in that that spot well I thought it was awesome you know I didn't know anything about it until you know social media afterwards or yesterday or whatever it was and uh, um, that just shows you what kind of guy Cam Little is and and uh, I'm glad he's on our team and he he certainly you know played well but uh, for him to have the concern and I don't know if they were friends you know the kickers they punters they go around together at all these different camps and things and he may have known him he may not have. If he didn't, uh, that was even a, a, a better and bigger gesture. But, uh, uh, you know, it says a little bit about him. There's not so much personnel on defense. What, what do you see, you know, what they're doing and what some of the backups have done as they've come in? You talking about our personnel or LSU? LSU on defense. Yeah, LSU, uh, you know, the, uh, Farrell, Neil Farrell, their nose guard is really good. I mean, we've got, we've got a nice matchup against him, uh, you know, with Ricky, but he's everywhere. Every film he put on, he's making plays. I really like him. I like number eight, uh, BJ. I'm, I don't want to mispronounce his name. Um, I like him as a speed rusher a lot. I love their linebackers. Damien, Damien, uh, Damone Clark runs that defense, in my opinion, 18. He reminds me a little bit of, of the linebacker that Texas had um, that that make you know can run is physical. Uh, Bakersville is second in the Mike is uh, Bakersville is a is a second leading tackler there. 
Jay Ward is a guy in the secondary that will pop you. A lot of lot of talent, LSU. They're going to be very, very talented. They'll run a little bit of four-man line, a little bit of movement. They'll rock one way or the other. Uh, and then they'll be in there, what I call a mint front, where is a is a true nose and a pair of fours. Do a little bit more of zone stuff out of that uh, movement, maybe some more, a little bit more too off the edge. They had a great uh, blitz package against Alabama. I mean, just a wonderful blitz package. You didn't know where they were. You had to, you would have to watch tape to get some indicators off of where they're coming from. But they they put uh, the quarterback from Alabama, you know, uh, in in a lot of hot situ or some hot situations. And um, so I, I think, you know, they had another week to prepare for that game and and uh, they did a great job on defense. I thought they played extremely hard, very physical, looked like a top 10, uh, top five defense in the country against Alabama. Yeah, they haven't run it like they really want to run it this year. What do you, what do you make of their offense and what they're doing there? Well, they want to run it, you know, and they, they're, they're a big counter team. You know, that, that's the one thing that, uh, we we have to they run a naked uh, naked boot off of that with with Johnson. So um, they want to establish the run. Um, they're not as much zone as what they were earlier in the year. It doesn't seem to me like they're more of a, a gap scheme, you know, uh, counter type. They love that play. It's, they should. It's been it been going well for them. I love this Heinz kid, the right guard. I mean, he's big, physical. Man, did he play well? against Alabama, you know, the uh, uh has been there forever. I think he's a super senior, but they have four of their five offensive linemen coming back. Unfortunately, Bradford, I believe, got hurt and's out for the season, but they've got a couple of backs that are quick. Uh, you know, I really like 21 and three, uh, but 21 Kiner has got that old Miss type back to him, you know, can, you know, make you miss in a phone booth type thing and of course they always have speed starting with Jenkins on the outside they always have speed so a lot of counter a lot of zone more counter than you no know, more gap than zone uh, they'll run some fly stuff from fly sweep a lot of nakeds and then Johnson with his height and his throwing ability he can drop back in a pocket and uh, they're getting better at protecting him as well Sam, uh, re reading the LSU uh, writers, sound like LSU had not blitzed a whole lot, but in the Alabama game, like you said, they had extra time. They blitzed a whole lot more than they had. What, what did you see from that? And what are you anticipating? Well, it worked, you know, so I'm assuming that we'll get that too. Uh, we've got to speed up our offense a little bit. I thought we we're playing a little bit slow. Uh, Saturday, we'll speed it up a little bit, try not to let them get into those uh, looks and into those special packages. I think we'll have to be very, very cognizant of how we sub getting to third down so we can keep who the, whom they have on the field. Um, and maybe they can't get to some of those looks as well. But um, you're right. It looked like a fresher, different different team as far as the blitz blitzes were concerned. And uh, so we're certainly anticipating that look versus – the zone coverages. And then Max Johnson, I don't think he played in the game last year. I think it was all Finley, but, but Max Johnson, their quarterback, well, what do you see from him? He's a competitor. You know, his daddy, I believe, played at Florida State, if I'm correct. Um, but he's a competitive guy, and he's got a really good arm. Um, got enough mobility to get away from you. Not, not a, They don't use him much as a runner. You know, but he is capable of scrambling and doing those things. But he's got a you – know, I remember him out of high school, and uh, we tried to recruit him over there at Georgia, you know, and, and uh, he certainly is smart and running the offense well. And each game he seems to be getting a little bit better. You know, he'll pick you apart if he has time. And he's, he's a good – he's a good, really good quarterback. I, you know, they brought in uh, Nussmeyer. Uh, I believe it was against Ole Miss, and and he's proven he can throw the ball too. A little bit, maybe a little bit more mobility with him, but uh, I think their guys, Max Johnson, they should be. He's, he's playing good ball. 
I guess with uh, Brad on their staff coaching, you know, deep uh, their offensive line, I mean, does he give them give them any extra insight into what you do, or at this stage of the season, does it really matter? I mean, uh, you got a good point. I mean, you're looking at they have nine nine games on us, you know, so I'm sure they'll do their study in there. Uh, I don't know. I don't know um, uh, what he might have. You know, we'll know what hurt them when he was here as far as our defense goes, you know, if what, what might have caused problems uh, for the offensive line when he was coaching there. Uh, he'll know our personnel, you know, even our new guys for the most part, except for uh, Big Ridge. You know, he'll know, he knows Utsi, obviously, from being at Missouri, and he knows Trey. Uh, so he'll know our personnel. So he'll know where, at least in their mind, uh, they want to try to attack us. So I don't know that it gives either team much of an advantage, to be honest with you. Also, as far as just your offensive line, just did it, it generally grayed out pretty well. Uh, yeah, I think they were all right in the low to mid 80s, which is is pretty good. I used to think if you get to 85, you you're playing some good ball. And I believe Myron Cunningham might have been the one that got to 85, but all of them were around that 84, 83 mark. Uh, made it maybe not quite as high with the guys who jumped off sides. We dock them pretty good for that. Coach, a lot of historic games between these two programs. Will you talk at all about wanting to bring another trophy home this week? Will you talk about any of those past contests that that we all know about? I don't know that we'll have a lot of conversation about um, the past games. Uh, we want we we certainly do. Um, you know, there's a trophy, and we'd like to have it. And uh, certainly, we know LSU would too. But um, I believe Basil designed it. I think he designs everything, you know. Um, but he designed a trophy. It's a wonderful trophy. We, it was here two of my three years when I was here before. Very heavy trophy. Um, but, yeah, we'll talk about about the boot and, and probably show a picture of it and things of that nature. We'd like to have it. Thank you. Do you plan on signing the full 25? I guess Warren Thompson counts against this class coming up, but like where are you guys with recruiting? Is it just depend on players coming back and stuff like that? I think a lot of it depends um, on what happens in the portal. I think that, you know, obviously you guys know that uh, you can't go over 85, but you could sign up to 32 if you're continued to stay under 85 as long as seven of your guys uh, get in the portal. So it's kind of an ongoing situation right now with what we have. Uh, we're pretty much maxed out right now. Um, you know, we had, we pushed uh, Ridge, Trey, Utsi, and uh, Warren. We pushed them uh, to this class, which, you know, with our current commits, it, we're, 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 we're pretty full. Um, if we get to a point where the number goes under 85 and at that point, that means that we would be buying back some portal guys, then we could go as high as 32, but that would be a lot of attrition at that point. Would you be able to borrow from a future class though, if you wanted to? I don't know yet. I haven't really looked into that part of it uh, yet. Um, it, it just depends on, what happens in the portal, you know, uh, and I really, I really don't want a whole lot to happen um, until, you know, after the season's over and we'll sit down and talk to guys and see what they're feeling. You know, to me, again, the portal could be a lot of guys uh, if, you know, guys choose to transfer somewhere where if they're not playing and they, uh, choose to transfer and play somewhere, which I'm 100% fine with. And you, I guess you guys plan to go out this week. Um, you plan on, I guess, hitting Louisiana. <laughs> yeah, we just have a couple of guys that we're gonna that we're gonna that we're gonna put out this week. Just just two. It's, it's kind of a stunning stat from that Alabama LSU game. LSU held them to six yards rushing. Six. Well, wonder what you thought about that. And also, when I saw the video of you guys calling the hogs, you were lifting that bowling ball like it was – I haven't bowled in a while, but I think they're pretty heavy. Did, 
<laughs> Have you just been working out a lot or? Well, <laughs> all right. So you asked me about what first? <laughs> it's been about uh, LSU hold Alabama to six rushing yards. Yeah, you know, the rushing part of it, you know, it gets skewed when the sacks and all that kind of stuff, you know what I mean, sacks count in, in college against the rushing stats, not necessarily in the league in an NFL. But, uh, yeah, I mean, they were all over the place now. They played hard. They played extremely well, and they flew around the ball. They were they played excited. And uh, I think someone asked me, you know, the first question about Coach O, he had his team. They were they were rolling. Uh, as far as the, the – The bowling ball, you were looking like it was nothing. Oh, the bowling ball. You know, I tore this um, – what do you call it? Bicep. I tore my bicep muscle. You know, I was doing that silly Yes Sir video at Georgia, and I went down to pick up Lucy like this, and I was going to, you know, she's a bulldog, you know, so I was going to put her in the video. And when I did, it just popped right through here, you know, like a 22 going off, you know, it really did, you know, but I had to get the video out, so my arm was shaking, you know. But anyway, I was a little concerned about lifting the bowling ball because it's heavy because I've torn this bicep, but I was, I was on adrenaline. It wasn't like it was a hundred pound ball, you know, I don't know how much it weighs, but it seemed to be pretty easy. Coach Dominique, uh, I think before this past weekend had only carried it six times tops in a game. He had 17 carries this past weekend. Was there any concern about him being able to handle that workload? And how do you think he did handling the increased carries? No, I mean, um, we need to do what we did and, and, um, you know, we talked uh, yesterday uh, about, you know, what, what could be his max load. I don't know that there's an answer. You can just feel it, you know, at some point, but I think 17 plus is a number. If you're going to carry rush the ball 40 times and of course, KJ ran it 11, you know, you, you understand what I'm saying. So, then you go 17, 28, now you're down to 12 carries at, or on a 40-carry game, and we've probably been a little bit over that. So, I don't know. He was running pretty good at the end of the game, didn't you think? So, we'd probably give him a few more. And also, your your contract is pretty unique in that with the hitting the six win, it, it kicked in a raise for you. Uh, I'm just curious. I mean, how, was that your idea when, when you got hired, or was that Hunter, or how, how did that come about? No, I think I'm thinking my contract. Um, it was if you want to earn a, a raise or whatever, um, you know, it had a clause in there, six, seven, and eight, and uh, so we hit we hit one of them. Was that your idea? Or oh no, I, I didn't have an idea. I mean, <laughs> They had a contract and I had a signature, you know, I mean, there was no idea about it. You know, he had a laptop and he opened it up and he started reading and I started signing. It's a pretty simple deal. Judy might've had a little idea, but she was up here with Jamie. Have you heard about that? Yeah, I did. What do you think? Uh, I mean, I don't want to comment on, I don't know what Jamie's doing up here. I mean, <laughs> She got that one day she asked a question when was I think it was A and M. Uh Jamie became a news reporter and now she's she needs to she need to come back here, sit back here and smile and be happy and we'll roll out of here together. Uh, I asked her for her autograph after she's up Jamie? there. Not saying, but no, uh that's awesome. Warren Thompson is on scholarship, but did you put Reed Bauer and Beto on scholarship too? Reed, yeah, Reed's been on scholarship for a while. Uh, Vito get one? Uh huh. Vito did last week as well. Were you guys not kicking for touchbacks? Were you wanting them to return a little? No. no. So he, Vito, we just never want them to return. I want Vito to kick that thing up in the nickel bleachers, which he did the last the last kick because me and Founds are going back and forth, and I guess I'm supposed to say Scott and I. We'll go back and forth, back and forth. And as you know, the worst thing, there's 21 seconds. You don't want to give them a chance. And Scott said, 
coach, he's going to kick it out. And I, he hit the, the pad in the back, I think. So he kicked it forever. But I mean, that was, there's a lot of calls right there at the end of the game where you're going. They're hard. I mean, it's hard on old big old heavy man. Last one, Robbie. Sam, your contract. I know you you wanted the job regardless, yeah. but that's really betting on yourself, isn't it? When you say, okay, I'm confident I'm gonna get six, seven, eight wins. So you don't need to give me the whatever. I'll I'll earn it, literally earn it. I mean, was that yeah, kind of well, that? you know, he Hunter went over and I, I don't think he'll mind me sharing. I mean, uh, he went over the con contract and then he was going over the when you get fired part of it and I remember I told him I said you can go over that if you want to you're wasting your time you're not gonna fire me I remember saying that and he said well contractually you know or whatever what do you call that legally or what you got he's got to go over it you know um but I wasn't listening to it I, I mean I just I saw I'm gonna be the head coach of Arkansas so I didn't the rest of it really didn't matter to me to be honest with you but do you feel good? You know, yes. you're showing confidence that I'm going to win these games, so I'm going to get that money. You know, so I don't yeah, that. and you know, everybody, everybody, you know, I don't do a whole lot. I really don't. I, you know, stand down there and whatever. But that's, you know, you hire coaches to help you win games, and then you go recruit players to do that. And really, that I'm now I'm not going to share it with the coaches either. By the way, but. Um, that's all of us together. They get their own little bonus for a bowl. They'll be fine. But uh, no, it's it's all of us, and and uh, really a neat deal, you know, for 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 Jamie and I. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, everybody.